Hey guys, I'm Joe, this is Theo Joe Tech, and this video I guess is more about science than tech, but everyone knows that sunscreen is really important for keeping your skin looking healthy over the years for sun exposure and also preventing cancer, but what exactly does that SPF number mean and how high should you go? That's what I'm gonna go over in this video because it's actually dead simple and you're gonna be surprised if you didn't already know what that whole number is about, you're gonna be so surprised that no one explained it already to you. So SPF stands for sun protection factor and it simply represents the fraction of burning UV rays that it allows through to your skin. So for example, say you have SPF 15, that means it's only going to allow 1 15th of the UV light through to your skin, meaning it blocks 94% of it. A better way to think of this is because it only allows 1 15th of the UV light through, it's going to take 15 times longer for you to get sunburn. So for example, say you burn in one minute on a really hot summer day, but you put on SPF 15 sunscreen. Now that one minute, you multiply now by a factor of 15, sun protection factor makes sense, and now it takes you 15 minutes to get the same burn as you normally would with no sunscreen. So at this point, it's really easy to see how you can tell how effective sunscreen is going to be just by multiplying the SPF by the amount of time it usually takes you to get burned, maybe a few minutes. So that was easy, but how can you tell exactly what SPF you should get? Well, there's actually a lot more to just the number, but I'll get into that in a bit. So the FDA actually recommends a minimum of SPF 15 for decent protection, but the American Academy of Dermatology recommends at least SPF 30. I know for me, I'm like super pale, so I get burned in a matter of minutes on a sunny day. So I usually go at least for 30, sometimes even up to 50 if I can. But as I mentioned before, you should be looking at more than just the number because there's a couple types of UV radiation and different sunscreens don't protect against them all. Now, typical sunscreen actually protects you against what is known as UVB radiation. This is what causes the normal symptoms of sunburn, such as redness, pain, but there's actually another type of radiation called UVA, which causes much more invisible damage. UVA radiation actually doesn't necessarily cause pain and redness that you normally associate with sunburn, but it does go deeper into your skin and can actually damage DNA in cells, which leads to an increased risk of skin cancer. I'm not really gonna get into the biology of it, but basically anytime your DNA gets damaged, your cells have to repair it, and sometimes if it gets damaged a lot, then there's more prone for errors and therefore cancer. So while you put on regular sunscreen, you might think you're fine because you're not getting burned, but you might actually be getting UVA damage that you don't even notice. But there are sunscreens that are called broad spectrum, which do claim to protect against both UVA and UVB radiation, which is really what you wanna use. However, not all broad spectrum sunscreen is created equal. There's two main ingredients that might be used in broad spectrum sunscreen. Namely, those are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Those are two different ingredients that might be used. And at least one study in 2001 found that zinc oxide is more effective at blocking more wavelengths of UVA. So compared to titanium dioxide, it may be better at protecting you. But either way, it's better to use any broad spectrum sunscreen than it is to use just regular stuff. So basically, in conclusion, the ideal sunscreen you would wanna use is at least SPF 30, broad spectrum, and if you can find it, something with zinc oxide in it. And that's the gist of it, so hopefully you guys got some good info out of there. I'm gonna be interested in what you guys think about this, so if you wanna leave a comment in the section below or hit me up on Twitter, I'll definitely be looking to what you guys think. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it, and maybe I'll make more like this, more science-based stuff, as opposed to just technology. And if you wanna check out some other videos on the right-hand side, you can either click them or look in the description for the same link, such as if you're on a phone. If you wanna subscribe, I try to make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.